think that's coming from Steve. All right, Victoria Bible Doodle Girl, tell us about some whimsical lettering. Okay. Well, this is what I have set up for you guys today. A little whimsical lettering with Bible Doodle Girl. So let's start with a few lessons. Now, if we're following along on our um, iPad, what do we have to, what do you have set up right now? Um, right now, I just have a dot grid in the background, which you can uh, look up on Google, search uh, dot grid, save the image, and you can import it. Um, so that's what I have in the background right now. The If you see it like kind of blinking, I'm turning on and off the layer. So that's what I have in the background. And then I just made a few lines that aren't uh, really quite necessary, but if you want, you can go ahead and make some. Um, it's just a few lines where I'm setting it up where this is the top part, the bottom part, and the middle part of the letter. So I just did that more for guidelines. So that's what I have set up. So I wanted to start off with just the basic lettering, which is, you know, this would be all caps right here. And this is just regular. So right, like you would just be like, uh, low in all caps. Where the these are kind of called um, bars or crossbars. And it's how the letters connect to each other. So let's say the letter H has this bar right? The E has that bar, and then the rest of them don't have anything in the middle. So I wanted to do that for, you know, kind of just talk about the, a little bit of the anatomy of the letter, of letters. So now I wanted to do something a little bit different to show you how you can differentiate your letters, how you can create a variation. And you can create a, sim a variation by just doing one simple thing which is moving this line that I just circled, and you're basically just moving it down. So that's what you see here, where you, um, this line, I, I labeled it low. So the, the crossbar where the H is, is a lot lower here than what it is in the regular one. So we're gonna do the same thing for the letter E. So you draw the, the letter E just the regular way that you would do it, but you put the bar a little bit lower. So right here, I'm, I'm having a continuity with the letter H, so I'm keeping it the same for right now. And then L, the L and the O would basically be just the same as what I did on the top one for the regular. But let's say we're doing the letter A. You do it the same way. And then the bar would be on that line. So I'm going to do a letter A if the bar was at the same point where it was over here at the top. And the bar would be in the middle, right? And that, there you see the difference between those two. And it's something very, very small, but it's just something where you add variation to your lettering. And you can go as extreme as you want. Let's say, even if you do it at the very, very top, you just keep going like, let's say B. So B is a little bit different than the ones that we've been doing before, like H and E. But you basically just do the what you would normally do in the middle like, this is how you would normally do a B, right? But you're just moving this middle part either higher or lower. Does anybody want to show something, that, um, the letters that they already did? Cool. Yeah, you got it. You're just moving the bar up and down. <laughs> awesome, Raven. That looks great. I love the, the last B. How you have it kind of like, yeah, like that. I just drew one 
similar to yours. Uh-oh, starting to get whimsical up in here. <laughs> okay, so that's one thing that you can do to variate your lettering, where you just, you move the, the bar. Now, another one is where you just make your letters wider. So as opposed to what it would be right here, let's say you just stretch it out this way, and you're moving this side. So now let's say for the E, I would do the same way, but then this time, instead of moving the bar, I'm gonna be um, elong elongating, I guess you could say, the, um, the rest of the letter. And you can make the middle part smaller or shorter, however you like to do your E's. And then let's say hello with the L, make the L bot the bottom part longer, and then the O bigger. And that you can use, like, you know, if you're maybe somebody yelling or it's something wider, the, the lettering looks bolder, you want to put in a bubble and let's say somebody, like, you want to show that they're yelling it so you can make it bigger and wider and kind of get that visual communication across. Look at that. Does anybody want to show the their widened letters? Cool. Yeah, it's really good. And y'all can do uh, other letters if you want. It doesn't have to necessarily be hello. That looks good, Raven. Okay, so let's jump to the next one. And this one is where we start getting a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say complicated, but a little bit more detail. So with this one is I'm adding like a box to one of the lines. So this is what I did for letter, e, for letter H. I put a box right here, and the rest of the letter was the same as how I was written, writing it before. And now for the E, I'm going to do a box for the first one, and then do the rest of the E the same way. And then the L, and then do a box. And I'll do this L differently. If you want to switch it up, it doesn't necessarily have to be the box on the first line. It can be the one in the bottom. And then the O. And you can do this with different letters. Let's say like with um, A, you're doing the first one, the box, and then the rest are lines. And you could also move the crossbar. Let's say like this one's in the bottom. So then from here, you can leave your letters like this and you can like um, color them in with a different color if you like to use different colors or even leave them in white. Um, but you can, let's say, like right here I'm coloring this one in. Or what you can also do just to make them a little bit more fun is you can add your own little um, decorations. So let's say for the H, right? You can do lines. And this adds more character to your, to your character, <laughs> more character to the letter. And uh, let's say for the E, you can do like circles. Um, the L, 
do you can do the lines diagonally Hi, Lori. Lori just joined in. Hi. Hi. So these are um, some variations that you can do with your lettering. Does anybody want to show uh, the boxes that they did with the letters? I think this is fun because I've you I've only before done kind of like the one with the lines. Uh huh. But it's crazy to um not have thought before like oh just make the lines go in a different direction and you have a whole nother effect. Yeah, yeah. You just by taking one little technique, either making it to one extreme or another one. Boom, buddy. That looks really good. Yeah, like you're just making like the bar go up and down or make the, the lettering go wider or skinnier, even make it really skinny too. That's a different variation for your lettering. Um, and then the boxes on the on one certain line, you can go in then and then do any kind of patterns that you can think of. You know, especially if you Google centangle patterns. Or mandala mandala patterns, you can find a whole bunch of different things that you can do just by, you know, circles or triangles or lines, and the possibilities are endless. So I'm gonna close out these um, small lessons for the regular, low, wide, and the box. And I am gonna close out the lines also. I have these already kind of set up where you see I just use the box on one letter and then the rest of them are just regular you know like I did very um, uppercase on this one and then lowercase on this one and it just adds like a different variety, you know, because it, it doesn't always have to stick with um, the same kind all the way through. It adds a little bit more fun, more personality to your lettering if you just mix it up. You know, there's no rules. You can do it however you want. There's no right or wrong. In the, if you're basically creating like your own kind of font by doing this. And it's not one, like, yeah, there are some where it's like, um, whimsical or you can see different ones, but no one's going to create one exactly the way that your lettering is going to come out. So I did this one over here and I added another variation, which is uh, one letter is in cursive right here, the L. And with this one, I, I feel like it's not as legible, so I probably wouldn't use this, you know, to post somewhere or to get something across, just because for me, like, I, I see different letters or different words here, but it, this is just like an example, where this one right here is, uh, is in cursive, and then this one is just like a regular one with the E. And something else that you can do to the letters that we were doing boxes in, like this H right here, um, I added just like a little swirl with the other, with the regular line that I would have just done straight down. And now I'm going to do, let's say, the an A. So I'll do the A with the regular box. And then where I would just do the line, I'll just do a straight line, but then all of a sudden it turns into a swirl. Um, another variation that you can do with the bars uh, we spoke earlier where it's like you move the bar up and down, but what you can also do is make the bar um, like a squiggly line like this. You know, instead of just straight, you can move it up and down like a wave. You can do it where it's, it goes in a slant. 
You know, it looks more, um, this A looks a little bit more italic or italicized than the other one. Um, and then right here, like we said before, you can add little patterns. That's interesting in your second A, the way the thicker line is on the further line. Oh, yeah. Um, on this one? Yeah. Yeah, what I did there is um, after learning or, I guess, applying techniques and doing drills with uh, trying to learn hand lettering, uh, what you – the main thing with hand lettering or brush lettering is that you do thin upstrokes and thick downstrokes. So that kind of comes out sometimes when I'm writing, and it'll it gives a, a difference in your in your lettering. Even when it's just like, you know, it, I'm not actually doing um, like cursive, but just by doing regular letters, it comes out. And you can do that, I think, with a, like I have a pencil touch pen, and it kind of, it, it mimics like a pen, but at the very end, it's a very small little brush, and it's kind of like felt tip, but it's so flexible enough where you, when you apply pressure, it gets thicker like this. And then when you do it lightly, it just goes like a thin line. So even that, and if you don't have like, let's say a, a brush pen or um, a Tombow or anything like that, you can always do um, faux calligraphy where, like I'll change up mine, where it's just a regular circle. This one is not gonna pick up my, my pressure. So let's say for an A, if you do, you know, it's going to be just regular, everything. And then where I, was apply, I would apply more pressure is when you go down. So that's right here. I would just apply a thicker, kind of like doing the boxes, just not that much. And so there you would still kind of have that brush effect, but you would just be more controlling where the pressure is going to go. Would anybody like to show anything that they've worked on? Muddy just um, had some sweet fun on the screen. I don't know if you got a chance to see it. No, I didn't. Cool, yeah. I love the little swirls on the U. That's very cool. I like those dots going down the N, and the dots inside the S are cool too. And Maddie's being over there, being creative, telling, doing stuff she ain't even showed us yet. <laughs> You're getting ahead of us. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, um, sorry. Um, okay. Steve is on the outside. Him and his wife, I think Deb. And he said, brush strokes can become tougher on pen and paper if you are left-handed. The brush strokes are backwards. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people, and man, like, there's some people that have, um, have said, like, that they're left-handed. But wow, like, they are amazing at brush lettering, and they just make it work. So I give props to you guys for being left-handed. <laughs> Paul, are you left-handed? Did he answer? Did he tell us? Or I probably shouldn't be asking him too many questions while I <laughs> yeah. now, I'm uh, right-handed, just starting to have a play with brush lettering and it, it's fun, but it's tricky to get used to, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, I know I was going on and off learning brush lettering for about two years. And I would get really frustrated because, you know, you're trying really hard at something and you really want to see progress right away, but it's just not going to happen quickly unless, you know, you're just magically gifted in that area. But, yeah, even for me just to now learn or just for it to come more natural where the, the pressure, it's because I've had to do, um, let me do it right here, where you do, uh, they call them drills. You go up. Oh, I still have the old one. 
let me get a pressure sensitive brush. So you basically go up with a thin stroke and you need to make sure that your hand is going up lightly. So here you're going up and then down, you, you apply more pressure. And when you keep doing this, you just, your hand starts learning, okay, um, like muscle memory, where it's like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do when I, when I do an upstroke, and this is what my hand is supposed to do when I do a downstroke. And if you just do that repeatedly, repeatedly, and eventually your hand is just going to get it like, oh, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do, you know, when my owner, uh, the owner of the hand goes up, down, up, down. And then, of course, you, you end up going to circles. And, of course, the same thing where it's when you go downwards, it's thick, and then up, thinner. But, yeah, it was definitely, um, I, I would just give up sometimes because I was really frustrated with not being where I wanted to be at. And... It was just afterwards, I was like, I really want to learn how to do this. So I would go back and try again. And then it wasn't until after a while where it's like, hey, it's it doesn't look as bad as it once did. And so, yeah, with just with practice, practice, practice. So, yeah, that's a little side thing on brush lettering. So another thing that I wanted um, to touch base on is why I get so used to this one. You can add um, shadows. And I'll go ahead and use this one over here. Um, the thing with shadows is that I see um, sometimes, I don't know, maybe it's done on purpose or not done on purpose, but for shadows, you want to keep it on a certain side consistently. So let's say for this one, um, you apply the shadow on this side of the letter, you know, to the right. So then you would apply it. I'll, I'll choose a different color, like gray. Can that be seen on the screen, the gray? Yes, okay, cool. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going with the shadow, but to the right of the letter and then I'll do it on this one and the O in there this part Hi, Carol Ann. Hi. Lori, are you still with us? Oh, you're muted, Lori. Let's see. Okay, so for the shadows, if you definitely want it to look more a little uh, more realistic, then just uh, make sure to keep consistent to where you're placing the the shadow. I've seen it sometimes where um, you know, and this is when I've seen people do you know, they're just practicing it. Um, I see it where they apply the shadow here, but then they also apply it on a different letter, like on the other side of the, not continually where it's like the left, you know. And that would be correct if, let's say, the lighting was from, you're putting the shadows from the middle out. And by that, let's say like this.
and I'll do something similar to that. But I don't know. For me, I like to keep it consistent into just one side. And you could also do a where, um, obviously, the left and the right. But it can also be where it's on the right and the bottom. So, yeah, you can, that's another way to just add something different to your lettering. Make it a little bit more fun. Or, like, also, um, Muddy, like how he was doing it, he was doing dots. And that could, um, that could just be, you know, just a simple decoration on one letter. But you could also even do the shadowing like that. Where, let's see. Like Ooh, I've never thought of that. Yeah, where it's just to the, to the right of the letter. And you don't have to do it on all of them. Like, uh, I had noticed he, he just did it, I think it was, like, on the end. Right, Muddy? And, but, yeah, you can do it on, let's say, like, that can be another form of your shadow. And just like the patterns that we were adding in here, in the, the boxes, you could even do that for your shadows too, like lines, you know, to make it look a little bit more 3D, or, I don't know, um, squiggly lines. You know, it just adds something else, something different to your lettering. And if you uh, have, like, um, gel pens, and if you do it first with, like, a black pen or a black marker, like how, let's say, this lettering, let's say I would have done it on paper with a black marker, but I have a white gel pen, I can always go over it, over the lettering, and do something else on there. Of course, with that, you would have to be careful that you, you're using a, what I wouldn't say very much carefully, but um, to, be care to be thoughtful to use two colors that where you see a big contrast. You know, obviously, if you're going to use, like, markers or a lot of times it's what, like... If what pen are you using right now? The pigeon. It's called the Pigeon Letters Brush Pen. Where do you get that pen? I believe I got it off iPadLettering.com. Lettering.com? Yes, I think it's iPadLettering.com. Okay, thanks. No problem. I know I get I get brush letters, um, brush brushes from different um, places online. I've never actually purchased a brush. You know, and I, there are some for sale or people that sell sets, but usually I get the ones that are um, that people offer freebies or that are ready in the in Procreate. So yeah, the, the Pigeon one is uh, pressure sensitive. So I think there's other ones in here in Procreate that are pressure sensitive as well. So I know that definitely kind of adds some kind of, um, it picks up my pressure sensitivity. So if I apply light pressure, the strokes are going to be thin, and if I apply um, a, more pressure, the, the lines are going to be thicker. So this was one uh, difference that you can do on your letters. And this, the where I added the white, it can be used like where you make it seem a little bit more um, like glossy, or if it's like water or anything like that, where it looks more 3D. And, but if you have like different gel pens and maybe use it on top of a black one, especially if they're like metallic or neon, you can always do different um, little designs on top of your letters. Let's say even, even if it's just like a line. I just want to um, verify the background is dot grid, but the dots that you're making on the screen, you're just dotting the screen to make those polka dots, right? Yes. Yeah. I can turn off the dot screen. There, there the, the dot screen is off. The link, I think, to your, um, 
to someone having the um, pigeon lettering brushes for free for Procreate. Okay, cool. Uh, and I'll put it on the latest Facebook image as well. Yeah, sometimes what I do and what, what I've seen that has helped me is uh, I'll try to stick with like three sizes of the brush. So this one, that's why you see over here that it says um, just regular, extra large, regular again, medium, small, extra small. Just so that way I can keep it consistent. Like especially when I do notes at church, I'll try to keep, I don't want to keep messing with the, the thing over here where it's like, okay, low, high, low, high. Because um, I think one downside of using of this where it's like you move it up and down the percentages is that you can't do it manually where it's like, okay, 30%, you know, to an exact thing. You kind of always have to be very careful that you don't go too high or too low. But for me, it's just easier to just save the brush already in a certain weight. That way I could, I just go back. And it's kind of like what you, like if you do it on paper, you know, you have maybe two or three pens where they're different um, weights. And one of them is really thin and you can use that for text. Another one can be really thick or a brush pen and you use that for titles, you know, for things that you want to stand up, stand out more. And that's what I kind of have to set up on my own here. Here are the brushes. Yeah. Is there any question, other questions? I'm looking for a link for the um, dot grit background. Mm -hmm. um, Carol Ann asked for one of the chats, so I just wanted to let everybody know that. I know I got mine from Sasha, I can't remember her last name, that does sketch notes. Um, Chow, I think. So just wanted to let Carol Ann know I'm looking for that link and I'll post it. Thank yeah, you. this one? Uh, for the dot grid that I have in the background, actually, if I just googled dot grid, and then I found an image that where I was like, hey, I'm laying an image. I'm sorry. You're just putting in an image back on yeah. back. Yeah. So I just look okay. for the image, and then I just insert flat image. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. No problem. So yeah, and sometimes I'll have to like I had I think of this one I had to duplicate it. That way, because I wanted the, the grid a certain, to be cut up in a certain way. Like if I zoom in here, there is a certain amount of, of dots. And I think when I originally put it in, it was like, let's say it's like this big. And you could always make it bigger and smaller, right, for, to your liking. But for me, I, I, this is actually two images put together. And that way, no, the I, other the other thing you could do is if you um, down you're looking for a grid, but you do a PNG transparent, you know, like put in your Google search uh -huh. plus PNG plus transparent. Then when you put it in, it won't have the white background. It will just be the grid, so you can lay that over top of any image. Right. Yeah. I usually have my my dots, uh, the dot grid in the background, and everything. All my layers are on top of it. But yeah, that, that's another good way to do it if you want to have the, the image on the top or the dot grid on the top where it still shows. Yeah. Is there a certain letter that you all would like to see done in a different way? Oh, there's another um, another variation that I really like to do. Oh, Muddy is, check this out. It says tricky, but he's tricked it out. Oh, let me see. That's really cool. Yeah. Are you using um, Procreate or are you using a different uh, program on iPad? <laughs> there you go, Steve. Super cute. Muddy, what app are you using? Yeah, I'm using Procreate, and this is <clears throat> my, my, my first real time using Procreate. I've opened it once or twice and just made a couple quick marks to check out a few pens, but I haven't actually drawn anything or done any lettering or, or uh, any sketches on it using it. So I thought, why not try it? 
So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before actually purchasing Procreate, I went through a couple of other apps that were free in the app store just to kind of get my feet wet. And it's like, okay, do I really want to purchase that app? Do I? And it's and once I went through the other apps, I was like, okay, like I like what these do, but now I want to go further and see what Procreate can do. And then once I purchased it, I was like, whoa, like. Um, if you're familiar with Illustrator and Photoshop, it, it has a lot of similarities to it. So especially if you already are skilled already in those programs, it'll be a lot easier for you to know, like, if you know the actions that can be done in Illustrator or Photoshop, like let's say opacity or just different actions that you can do, you kind of start looking for them on here on Procreate. And a lot of them, obviously it's not going to be the same program, but it's, it definitely has a lot of similarities and recently they did a, do they did do like um, some updates on it where it's getting even closer to being like illustrator or another Adobe program for example the layers uh, before it was just all layers that you can only do now they made it an option where you can do groups mm -hmm. and so there you can group your layers so that's something else, yeah. I, I really, really, really like Procreate, and I, I feel like it was really worth, you know, purchasing it. But I think, like, everybody's different, and everybody has their own kind of thing that they really want to get from a program. So what what is great for me might not be great for somebody else. I know some other people really like, um, I think it's called Sketch 53 or something similar to that title, and it, it works for them, and they like um, even if it's more simple, more simplicity, or there's other programs where the, the watercolor, like if you really like to use watercolors, you know, on paper, and you really want that watercolor effect on your digital notes or digital art, there's other programs that um, make it look like the paint is um, joining to each other, similar to what it would be like on watercolor paper. Yeah, I think that's Paper 53. Yeah, there you go. Paper 53. Thank you. Although I think the canvas area is fairly limited on Paper mm -hmm. 53, which is one of the reasons why I stopped using it. Which, which one do you use now? Actually, I still use pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people actually do their sketch notes live uh, versus going back in sort of after the fact. Um, I find that I, I'm still not proficient enough with Procreate to, to move as quickly as I would like. I use Procreate Live. You do? Yep. Yeah. It, do. I, it's my absolute favorite app, and I have, I have pages and pages of apps that I've gone through with, uh, for sketchnoting, and by far it's my favorite one. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I know at first when I got the program, you know, I had never used it and it was, um, I guess I had purchased it on a Saturday and I was going to go to church the next day and I was like, oh my goodness, should I just go ahead and jump in and just use it? Like I haven't even messed with it or anything like that. Yeah. And I think I messed with it first at home before I actually went ahead and used it live during church. And afterwards, you kind of, like, every time I think you use it or every time you do something new, um, you kind of see what area you, area you want to work on. Yep. And with each time, you kind of fight your fear and say, okay, I'm going to do this even though I don't, I might fail, but you know what, at least I'm going to try and do it. Yeah. And even with just taking that step, you know what to work on or yep. you know what doesn't work for you or what does work for you. And if, if doing it that way, I've seen more progress. Well, I only have three pages left in my moleskin, so it's time to move to digital. Oh. Yeah. I still have a problem, though. Like, I have to limit myself. I've had to put a, a, a ban on myself to not purchase any more journals just because I'll purchase and purchase journals. And, you know, maybe I'll write in them, but a few pages, and then, and then I'll jump into a new one. So after I bought the iPad, I told myself no more buying journals, which is kind of hard sometimes because you see some that are really pretty, but, yeah. Victoria, did you have any more step-by-steps 
to show us. I'm, I'm enjoying this conversation, but I kind of just want to close out the live broadcast if we're just going to discuss mm -hmm. discussing, but I don't know how much value that is to anybody listening outside of the room. Okay. Yeah. Um, those were all, unless somebody has a question or would like to see me um, teach a different kind of uh, form. You know what? I, I, I want to know something. Do you, on your iPad, since you have it hooked up live, mm -hmm. can you show us some of the sketch notes you've done and let us see the lettering that, um, mm -hmm. you know, you can kind of zoom in on some of the images you do and show us, see, this is where you did the box and this is where you added the curve. Sure. So you can see the inside of something completed. Yes. Um, is it okay if I show the what we've been working on for a gospel sketch? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is one of them, and right here, um, I took the box thing for the lettering, but I made it to where the whole, um, well, in this case, it would be a number, right? Where the whole number is a box, where it's not just the a certain line. And then right here, it's a lot easier to do shadows in Procreate because you can just, especially if there's like layers, um, you can see the the shadow over here. And this one is a merge down um, photo, so it doesn't have the layers available, but you can see the shadows right here. And there I just duplicated the layer underneath, lowered the opacity and scooted it on over, you know. Um, another one here. This is a piece that I did for uh, one of my friends who's a youth pastor, and he really wanted to show um, Galatians 5:22 to his kids. So he asked me to do something with that verse. And so here you can kind of see where I kind of morph the the lettering, where it wasn't just staying in one specific line. Here you can see the box. I, I did the box, but it was filled in. So you here you see it on, on that side, and this part is normal, which um, can also be done with just you know the regular pressure. This one, you know, it's um, elongated. The text is elongated, and even though not all of them, they like. Um, for the other ones that we were seeing in the lessons, the lines were like this. But if you're going to fill out something, on, uh, the whatever shape, you know, like this one, it was more of a circle. So the midline still stayed here, and all the bars were still the same, in the same length. It was just the, the top and the bottom that were changing. When you go with a curved shape like that, do you put curved top and bottom guidelines in? No, I don't. I, I freehand it. On this one, I, I did freehand, where I already had the, the lemon shape, like let's see this one, and then I just kind of went in and tried to fit it all in. And if it wouldn't fit in, then um, I would just, you know, undo and then redo it again until I felt that everything was kind of filled in. But um, I feel probably before when I would do this in college, I probably would do use guidelines, you know, just to help out, especially if there's not an image already there. But yeah, that, that'll definitely help out until you feel more comfortable with saying, okay, like I don't need the guidelines anymore. I've kind of learned how to, how to do it on my own. Very nice. Thank you. Let me look for some notes. I appreciate the play-by-play. -play. I feel like we're watching old sports footage and somebody's going in, highlighting all the moves and the players moving around the field. I don't know enough sports um, vocabulary to make that. <laughs> yeah. um, on this one, you can kind of see a little bit of the, the swirls that I did, you know, at the end of the letter, right there, where it wasn't just, okay, completely end, bam, it kind of kept flowing. And this one also, I did a variation on, uh, earlier I had said capital letters, lowercase. And right here you see a lowercase letter in between, you know, a whole bunch of capital letters. This one right here. 
and then like this O, it's not like a regular O. It's, I did it more like a cursive O. So there you have another variation. Do you have any recommendations for uh, drill sheet resources on calligraphy? Um, I know I've seen a lot on Pinterest. Like if you use um, search uh, drills or hand lettering worksheets, there's tons of free ones. Also, uh, Don Nicole has a whole bunch of them. Uh, Tombow has free uh, brush lettering as well. Um, for online, would you want them like um, to print out or for digital? Digital. Digital? Um, I would just search um, on Google, like um, brush lettering sheets. And then what I've done, I've just saved the picture and then uh, pulled it into in here, into Procreate, and made a new layer and then do it over. Like, um, basically what you would be doing on paper, but on here. Thank you. No problem. And any other one that you would like to see, Raven? Okay. I like seeing the applications for this, that in a sermon like Intersect is a time to use whimsical. <laughs> like, okay, go crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it's neat because not every topic uh, is appropriate to use whimsical lettering. So it's neat to see um, how you're using it and to see that on the shadows on the example she showed us, the shadows touch the letters, but on the one we did with the workshop, the shadow kind of hung off of the letter. Right, yeah. It come right up to it. Yeah, something different. Cool. Lori or Carol Ann, did y'all have any examples to show? Or did we see Steve? Steve was like, you're slick, man. When we were hanging up examples, you were outside the room. Now you're back. You show us some of your lefty work. Oh, I, I, uh, I don't know. I'm still trying. I'm in my left-handed mode. <laughs> I, I do like the pigeon brush. I've got, I've got to, I've got to work on the up and the down stroke. That's, that's a great pointer, though. Thank you. I was, I was chuckling when you said that there's times when whimsical lettering wouldn't work, and what popped up is that section of Leviticus when they're talking about uh, leprosy. <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of funny now that I think about it that I actually you know went a little whimsical right here where it says dangerous but mm -hmm. I'm glad that I didn't go you know full on you know making like swirls with it where it was just a little bit and that was just you know enough for it but yeah because um one thing I learned in, in art school was that fonts have a, a personality and you want that personality to match what you're saying or what that word is trying to convey. No. I've enjoyed this. I've picked up a lot of cool things that I want to try and just also just feel a freedom that like, I guess, whimsical implies but sometimes you have to actually see it happen to know that it's okay for all the letters not to touch the bottom you mm -hmm. know or to be different sizes and yeah, you know just them, things that computer fonts don't do yeah yeah that's a, a great benefit about um, doing stuff like hand lettering you know it's not going to be straight all in the line like disciplined because you know, it's just something that you're typing and it's going to come out like that. But when you do something by hand, it's going to come out different and it's going to come out original. And you have the power to, to do it how you want to do it. Anyone else have any questions? I don't want to just sit here and blab on forever about letters because I think they're cool. No, I can totally geek out on letters. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I'm really grateful that everybody tuned in and to see, you know, what I had to teach or talk about whimsical lettering. So thank you all for joining in. All right. And just so everyone knows, um, Victoria job with your own branding. So we can find Victoria as Bible Doodle Girl, not just inside the group, but also on Instagram. Uh, there's a separate Facebook page um, for Bible Doodle Girl. And you also do coloring sheets. Notes yes. In the coloring sheets, right? Yes. Like um, my notes, usually I just end up uh, creating them like in black and white. Let me see if I can find one. I have like this one um, I printed it out given it out to people or even when somebody asked me online that they would like for me to send them the file they just simply message me on the Facebook page and I, I just reply with the with this uh, a PDF file that they can print from home and they can go ahead and color it in um, some people have used it for their classrooms you know why they, while they teach Sunday school on church and they teach this was from a preaching but it's really cool that even though it's from a preaching, you know, taught to adults, that the kids can still learn from it and they can color and they can meditate on the word and still uh, get something from it. Sweet. Um, and you showed a bit of the gospel sketch project image. Yes. Do you want me to play as well? Yeah. Yeah. So I just, uh, going on or you can you you have the floor no you go for it <laughs> so um, in the community member spotlight with Constance Constance Wilson um, we started talking about with her on challenges because Constance is like the challenge queen like the Instagram sketch 50 challenges and that kind of stuff and so she was telling us how she had done like um, five or six of them all at one time and would just make one giant poster with images from all the challenges, like draw fruit of the day, draw this, draw this, write this. And um, so we wanted to make one for the um, sermon sketch note groups that focuses on building our visual vocabulary for sermons. So this is what um, Victoria had bought up not too long ago is, um, that we want to go week by week and have a different topic. So, so y'all are seeing this first. She just made it. Yep. Yeah. And you can see a little bit of whimsical like um, swirls right here on this S. I forgot I had seen that. And um, right here on this K also. And so also coming up um, in the group, Steve, is going to do a community member spotlight in a few weeks and tell us all about his tour sketch noting. I'm excited to hear about that. And we got to find out more about Carol Ann and Lori. Like, so, y'all will be up next. Be emailing y'all. Let's do something. Mm -hmm. My sketches are very different from these, so it's, it's fun to watch what everybody else is doing. And I'm just glad to see there's a community out there and yeah. starting to be more active in sharing, uh, you know, what we're all doing individually. And mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun to, to see everybody else's sketch notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that I really like is, um, can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. I know my phone got disconnected because it died, <laughs> but um, I know one thing I really, really enjoy from seeing other people's notes is that you you definitely see their style come out. Mm -hmm. You know, every everyone has their own style, their own way of uh, doing notes, whether it's all hand lettering or it's all lettering and doodles or all doodles. And I really, really, really enjoy seeing everybody's uh, style and their personality come out through it. Sweet. Well, if there's no more questions for Victoria, we're, I'm going to at least stop the broadcast. We can still stay on here and hang out. And I want to thank everybody for showing up. It's uh, Victoria put a lot of work into this. So thank you, Victoria. Thank no you. Problem. My pleasure. 
maybe she'll come back and show us something different. I think in the two weeks, Paul is going to chime in from Australia and um, talk to us about calligraphy. Um, he heard Steve's left-handed cry, so maybe he'll be prepared with some secrets for left-handers as well. <laughs> but, um, and I think I need to get with you, Lori, get your email address to make sure you're on the list. And um, I think there's someone that's not in here that also said they, did, they didn't get the email. But um, if you sign up on sermonsketchnotes.org, and I'm talking to the viewing audience because obviously y'all are in here on sermonsketchnotes.org. There's a email list that you can sign up for where just the, um, the links for these future um, broadcasts will go out so we can all actually interact with each other as we learn. Cool, cool. Sounds good.